Um, my name is Nathan, as I said again. <clears throat> and let's see. I am here. I'm going to be working on my game, Guilds of Nugenic. Um, my TT RPG or tabletop role playing game, as I'm sure you have seen from my posts or different things. So basically, I'm just going to work on some stuff live. If people do join in, you guys can ask questions. I'll try to keep an eye on different things. Uh, yeah. So, let's see here. I'm basically, all I'm doing right now is just working on making monsters and combat encounters for the players. Uh, let's see, can I pin this? No, I want this pin though. It'd be very helpful, just so I could see if anyone actually is joining. Okay. So I'm making uh, combat encounters for the game. Uh, my goal with guilds is that I want there to be... I want it to be an easy process for people to be able to create scenarios and, and, and encounters. A lot of pre-made things, but slightly randomized. So I'll just kind of go over it a little bit. Um, go over what I mean. So I have s scenarios. I have a system where you roll a d20 uh, and you follow the encounter table. Uh, just whatever the dice rolls is what you get. So you roll, you get a 9, you get a neutral encounter. Then you would go down through the uh, rules and you would find neutral I guess I should probably put neutral encounters so if you get a neutral en encounter you roll a uh, 1d6 and then what, what you see here is you see uh, guilds on, on a roll of 1 on 2 and 3 you get a caravan on a 4 you get hunters Five or six, you get a village. And if you get guilds, then you have to roll another d4 to see what kind of guild type you're encountering. This is just to make it easier for the uh, uh, the GM to create an, an encounter. So defense, you know, you grab you get you grab the appropriate archetypes. Um. My plan for that, for the finished, or for the pre-made character encounters, I'm going to have a list of different archetypes. So there's no actual classes within guilds. Um, instead, it's just based on playstyle, at least for the players, and different abilities that people can choose. So my idea is I'm going to create, basically classes but archetypes for the preset characters made and so then i'm going to make uh 21 st uh stat blocks from level 0 to level 21 for that type of pre-made character so so that's the idea um most people have um like m most games a lot of games have that but I want to make it more in-depth and easier to grab. Gotta get that coffee. Um, let's see. So, Defense Guild, Range Guild, Melee Guild, and Walker Guild. So... But yeah, so that's all I'm going to be doing today is making some or writing, fleshing out the care, uh, the creatures today. Um, 
with with the creatures, I also want their to ha- them to have their own stats, which you know again is normal, but different abilities that they have. I also have a system of actual stats, like they're called stats in game, which they're not like. Um. The the more than no wait not not that. There are fortitude, reflex, uh, suave, luck, and intelligence. So those five are the typical stats. Um, they give they initially were implemented to be a common or to be a way to grow a character role play wise. You know instead of everybody. You know, say you wanted a character to climb a tree, you know, in single character. The goal is that with stats, that they can actually have things that they can add to that role. Um, so, that is the idea. I'm actually going to only allow uh, audio through this. I'm new to all streaming. But, you know, you got to start somewhere. Um, all right, let's see. All right. So, so that's really, really what stats are. Um, and now with it, you know, you can add it to other things. It can, it can imp- impact combat now as well. Um, the idea of it impacting combat is like every two stats you have in or at every two points you have in the stat, it gives you a slight buff. So two fortitude, if, if you have two fortitude, you can either get plus one damage or plus one save roll. Um, and there's no AC. It, it is a, a save roll that you... Um, every character has an attack roll, a save roll, and a damage roll, uh, which I say base. Uh, it's the base save roll, the base attack roll, and the base damage before you even roll for it. Uh, so say someone has an attack, a base attack roll of 8, then they roll a d20, they roll a, a, a 13, and they get 21. That 8 is counted as their base attack roll. Um, so, anyways, I'm going to get to working because I actually have quite a bit that I want to get done. This has been probably the hardest part of writing my game because I have a lot of the character well you know the races ba- uh, abilities um, I have a lot of that all like the fun stuff done you know this is kind of more the not as fun things to do so but it is necessary because it is what I want for my game you know I got the items done for the most part uh, most of the gameplay rules and now I'm just work, having to work on scenarios, encounters, and characters. Or monsters and creatures, which is always fun. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to do monsters and creatures section, and then creatures and monsters. What I'm instead going to do is name this something else. Uh, I'm going to do basic creatures. Because I'm going to have another section that is Void Creatures. And Void is basically my evil in this game. So they are the bad guys. Uh, you, you don't mess with Void. Well, actually, the, the goal is to mess with, mess with Void and to destroy him. Um, but yeah, okay, so let, let me fix these saves. So the idea is that um, adding the saves, you know, because there are abilities that require uh, stat rolls um, or, or, or stat saves. So fortitude saves, reflex save, intelligence saves. Um, so I, I need to make sure I add those to the monsters as well, just so that for people who have abilities that require save rules they can actually be effective 
um, against monsters, and the monsters aren't just rolled over. Because a, tr a troll, you know, a troll is supposed to be strong. So it should have a... Let's see. I'm going to put the saves right here. So trolls should have strong... You know, they should have a high fortitude. Um, probably nothing else. You know, high for high fortitude. Maybe they could have a high... Nothing else, really. So, just a high fortitude. Uh, let's see. How, how do I write it in? Do I just do four? Yeah. Plus six. Uh, actually, I'm going to do plus eight, just because... Everything else is pretty low, plus two luck. Uh, and luck is for initiative. Um, you add your full luck to any initiative roll that you have. Um, and that's basically that's basically what happens. Um, that's the way that you do initiative, along with a d20. So... Um, Let's see here. So yeah, just those two. Because it's not fast, it's not smart, it's not charismatic. It is a troll. It is big and dumb. It's actually a Ravager as well, which most people wouldn't actually know what that is. But what a Ravager is, they are rock people, basically. Because um, I wanted orcs, but I didn't want orcs. Because I wanted something a bit more... I, I want to try to be original. Because I actually enjoy being original for the most part. So... I'm actually going to bring wolves down a bit. They shouldn't be so strong. Um, one of the issues is that I normally have very strong player characters. So in my pl playtesting... I have a lot of strong player characters, um, and it's not really fun. Well, it, it, it is fun. It's just, it's difficult as a, it's not difficult a, a, as a GM. I think I've learned how to work around it, um, but it's been difficult to try to find that, um, Trying to find how to balance combat around such optimized players. You know, because I can make an unoptimized uh, character and it's okay. You know, it's not great. You know, he it's not like he's a master in just this one thing. You know, a, a lot of times I'll make all-rounder characters or w ones that have some combat potential but also do this it's for combat. However, I play with a lot of, a lot of my players are fully optimized for combat. Which again, it just makes it difficult for balance wise. Sorry, I just wanna clean that up a little bit. Because I know most, a lot of people won't create a fully optimized build. Um, so I want to do what I can. So I just want to do 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 what I can to um, make monsters approachable for a normal balance encounter, instead of making them for incredibly powerful everything. You know, um, I I, th I think this way it works a lot better because one of the things I've learned when it comes to players who have very optimized builds, you just take what the game gives you. You you, you, you take the wolf stats. Say, say you have to run wolves against your players. You take these stats, and, you know, if you know you have one fully optimized guy, make two or three super double powerful wolves, triple powerful wolves to fight him. 
while everybody else can still face wolves that are designed around them. It's just, uh, you know, in instead of worrying about wanting to make everything or balanced for an optimized player, it's easier to make things balanced for a balanced character and just buff enemies for the fully optimized, which is what I've had to learn. Um, let's see. I want to come up with some cool abilities for my wolves. I think I'm going to do something with the pack. Pack attack. There you go. Uh, let's see. So another, another thing that I have in this game is a, um, it's like, because group fighting is fun. Let's see, where is it? Unless I have to actually write them in. I do. I did not write in those rules yet. Okay. So, all right. Here we go. Now now I can actually come up with something. Group fighting. Uh, the reason why this is, is there's some weak enemies. Uh, there, there's a common enemy called a harpy. Um, and they're extremely weak. They're not really made to be much of a threat against higher level characters. However, with group fighting... Um, Why is that doing that? Combat group is through two or more This could be three harpies or six why does it do that? Harpies fighting together as a group. Um, now, how, how this works is that the attack roll, uh, so the attack roll of the group is going to be uh, added on. Uh, or take take the normal attack roll for a harpy, which is one. Um, and then take all your harpies. So if it's six harpies, you have one attack roll. It is now six attack. Uh, they have a six, six plus attack roll to that their attacks. And that goes down as the harpies die. Um, the attack roll is... Is the base AR of a single enemy multiplied by the number of enemies in the group. So six harpies, six attack roll. They deal their uh, the save roll is why does it do that? Save roll is is also. I'm going to say the save roll is similar to the attack roll, but it is cut in half. Uh, the reason why you would do this is that. You know, in case, um, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to do that the save roll is the same as the attack roll, because you commonly wouldn't stack high, like, specialized characters, or spe specialized enemies in one group. Um, so if you do group fighting, it's common, it would commonly be like wolves, or dwarg, uh, or feral dwargs. Maybe gnomes, level zero characters, level one characters, villagers, 
things like that. People who are strong on their own, but there's a lot of them. That's what you would do it with. You wouldn't take people. Uh, you wouldn't take characters who are like plus ten save roll and add five of them to a group because guess what? You're not breaking into that group at all because you know fifty save roll. Good luck beating that. So. Um, I'm just going to make that clear. I'm going to say no one over level 5 can be... Why is it doing that? Over level 5 can be part of a group. Um, level 5 characters and over cannot be part of a group. There we go. Save roll is the same as the attack roll. Take the base save roll and multiply it by the number of group members. Now, damage is the only thing that's a little bit different because you can do the same thing where damage, all the damage is multiplied. However, you know, if you have 10 harpies and they're all, you know, and each harpy does 1d4 damage plus 1. Say that way. So then automatically they're doing, at the very minimum, they're dealing 20 damage. Maximum, they could be dealing 50 damage. So, uh, what is going to be, uh, that's, DMG is my common uh, shorthand for damage. SR is save roll, AR is attack roll. I just want to make, uh, clarify that. Because I use my own sh shorthand. In writing my own rules, I like shorthand a lot. However, I realize I could just write it with shorthand and then replace it with the full term attack roll, save roll, damage, rather than SR, AR, Um, But we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see how, how this goes on. The damage. Um. So let's see. How do I want to put this for damage? You roll half of the. You roll half of the damage dice. Uh, they only deal half of their damage. So say 10 harpies each do 1d4 plus 1 damage as a group they would do 1d4 plus, no, would do a total of 5d4 plus 5 damage, which is still, you know, you know still a good amount of damage. Um, so I think this works without it being, without having to create or, or take harpies, take low-level characters like harpies, and have to um, level them up every few levels. Instead, you just take a bunch of them, you know? Um, health is also each for health. Character cannot deal 
damage to every group member with an attack unless it is an AoE or unless it is an AoE attack yeah um wait a a a area of effect yeah so basically that would be fire uh water different wa walker abilities or a um I mean I guess a I guess technically if someone had a shotgun they could burst shot at the group um but but yeah that that is not currently a thing so let us see here um the total p is the combined base of all members on normal attacks let's see normal attacks hit a single mem at a time yeah so 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 that's what it is um basically say i mean harp harpies have a total health of 10 so if there's 10 harpies they have 100 health if someone attacks deals 30 damage three harpies are dead um if they deal but they they don't deal 30 damage to each harpy they deal 30 damage to the group itself so i hope that makes sense um i hope that's clear so yeah so that is group encounters or or group um group things what why is this no what cremate why oh yeah worm all right let's see let's see so right here there are five vitality five wounds one save roll one attack roll one d4 plus one damage their equipment is clubs and throwing daggers so harpies would so again 10 harpies that's 100 health 10 save roll 10 attack roll and 5d4 plus 5 damage um there's a lot of ways for people to get around um save roll plus you don't have to have just one group you can have multiple groups of say you have a total of 50 harpies on the field you can make 10 groups of five or five groups of 10. Anything that you have, you have so many harpies, you can simplify it instead of having to play every single harpy at a time. You make them, you know, because a, a harpy by themselves will never, ever deal damage or substantial damage. E even if they deal damage, they will not deal substantial damage to a, a level 10 character, let's say. The only way they could is if they get a a, a, a a critical or if the uh character gets a critical fail on, on their save roll. So this kind of I think this balances it out. I, th I think this makes it nice personally. Um yeah. However, with the pack attack this is the one change I'm going to be making with... So, so the reason why I went through all of that is because I'm going to change something with wolves. While fighting as a group, wolves will deal their full... Their... F uh, will deal their full damage. It will not be halved. So... This is a bit different now, which is awesome. This is going to make it make wolves specifically just act differently than other encounters that they may have. So they'll deal more damage. Obviously, it's not like super anything, but they will deal damage. Um, let's see. 
what else could could I do to make wolves interesting? Um, ooh, actually. Nope, that's the wrong button. Domesticated. Well, it, because sometimes wolves may be used with bandits instead of just by wolves. If a wolf is part of a group of hu uh, well grouped of humanoid characters, then they gain the bodyguard ability and they gain the bodyguard ability, and they will something else. And they will gain a automatic. No, 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 no. Instead of the bodyguard ability, an attack if in range of a character making a successful attack on their master so if their master is being attacked by a player character the wolf if they're within range will automatically attack the character once the character's normal um, attack is done so just you know they're the very they are loyal to their masters and want to protect them. Um, I'm not going to do a successful attack. They will make an attack. Because I don't want to just give it a free a free attack. An attack on their masters. However, if dead. If their master dies. The wolf will... The wolf gains double double AR and damage versus the one who struck the killing blow. So makes them quite interesting. Um, makes them a bit of a challenge if I, facing with a bandit. Even though you know double attack roll is only up to eight, which. Again, optimized characters are super powerful. Non-optimized characters will be fine. Plus, a wolf only has 25 he to total health. So the chance of a wolf dying would be higher than most people. Alright. Actually, this reminds me. I gotta make a slight change to item. To items. Um, I'm gonna go to... Yes, because, so I have explosives, and what I'm going to do is explosives deal damage to wounds. Um, so the idea, so the difference between vitality and wounds, why is there vitality, why is there wounds? In my mind... And it doesn't necessarily always work this way, but what vitality is supposed to be is someone's ability to dodge. So so I guess there's three of these. There's the save roll, which is not health, but it's a save roll. There's vitality, and then there's wounds. A save roll is your armor and your defensive capability. It is someone swung, swung a sword at you, and either that sword hits your armor, bounces off, or it goes into you. Into you. Or with vitality, it would be, you know, your your armor doesn't block it, but you dodge it, losing stamina, losing th things like that. It doesn't fully work. It's not fully realistic, you know. Like if someone, you know, say someone takes four shots with a pistol at a character, you know, and two have successful save rolls, you know, so either they glance off the armor or they're embedded in the armor and then they make two uh, and then they take two hits, which they just dodge, 
you know. It, it's, yeah, it's gamey, but I don't know. I, I like the idea of just differentiating between wounds and vitality. I think it works. I think it works very well. Um, and yeah. So, let me see. I want to see if I can get more people. Well, actually anybody on here. Because I am live streaming. So, I'm going to try to live stream more. Do more of this. Because this is going to help. Um, yeah, I have a story. Ah, well. I guess I'll just keep doing this. All right, so let us see what is next. Oh, uh, dam damage to wounds and damage to wounds. I guess technically they could make... Um, uh, maybe I need to just do some explosive, some explosives rules, actually, because th there's two ways to do explosives. You can make people make a save roll. You can make people make more than just a save roll. Um make like a reflex roll to dodge the I don't know why it does this you make them dodge basically uh, dodge out of the explosives way but let's see here oh. explosives uh, it doesn't have to be 15 point. Let's bring it down to 13. No, it's all at 12. Let's bring it up to 12. No, you stay that way. All right. Explosives. So basically what I'll do when... Okay, how, how do I start this? So it should be that an explosive is thrown. And what happens is that the explosive itself... Um, you know, I wonder if what I could do... Because I may just end the stream and move the stream to Twitch. There's a higher potential that people will actually join the Twitch stream than a YouTube stream. So, just because people, random pe people may see, see things. So, I'm going to stop the stream here. Um, I'm going to move on over to Twitch. I'm going to keep the video up on my channel. So, if you watch it, thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope, you know, there's... I hope you learned something about uh, a new genic, uh guilds. Um, yeah. So, I'm going to try st streaming again. going to try to...